Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, my name is Michael Schmiller. I'm the Managing Director of Thai News, and I welcome you to our Thai News webinar series. Um, today's topic is advantages of string inverters in utility scale solar plants, views from a leading manufacturer and developer EPC. Often when we talk about solar system, we talk about the heart and that's the module, um, but there is an equally important part um, and uh, the importance is only growing and that's the brain of uh, a solar system, the inverter. Um, if we talk about a rooftop solar system, this brain in, uh, is very often a string inverter. Um, and when we look at utility scale projects, uh, which is the topic today, um, we're seeing in many, many projects now increasingly string inverters being used as well. For this webinar today, we really want to look into the latest developments in, in, in string inverter technology for utility scale solar power plants. And we want to do that from the view of the leading inverter manufacturers. We have with us uh, Jinlong Solis from China and from the view of an international developer EPC. And this part is being taken by Anna Park, um, which is um, headquartered in Germany and is also the country's largest solar IPP. So not only an EPC developer, but also a solar IPP. So we will have two presentations in the coming 45 to 60 minutes. Um, we will start with Gary Lamb, head of utility business in the US. He will speak about an evolution in utility scale solar. Then Armin Scherl, um, team leader um, system engineering from Enerpark will talk about the design aspects for inverters and utility scale solar plants. And in the end, we will have um, a Q&A. So um, we're looking forward to receive your questions. Please enter the questions in the control panel. And um, then um, we will... Um, um, and then we will um, start um, um, and we will ask the questions. Um, again, so let's, oh, I just get a message. Gary, um, is that okay if um, Armin speaks first or because I just got a message from Claire? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, Armin, you wanna start? Just sure, no, no problem. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I can start. <laughs> okay, um, so then let's directly jump into the presentation. Okay. So can you see the presentation now? Yes. Okay. Looks good. Great. Okay. Yeah. So first, uh, some words about me. I'm uh, Armin Scherl. Um, I'm from Anna Park. Uh, I'm now more than 10 years in the firm and um, yeah, now responsible for the systems engineering team. And um, yeah, we are working all day about uh, the system design of a PV power plant and later we hand over to the project engineers. And so this is uh, quite a topic which we have a lot of times that we need to decide if we want to go with central or string inverters. And um, yeah, let me show first the, the agenda and the overview uh, what I want to talk about. Um, here, um, yeah, it's, it's not so uh, simple. So we have different uh, categories, I would say, um, where we have some advantages for, for string inverters, but uh, some points in these uh, categories are uh, go continuously over to the another con uh, category. But um, yeah, the first 
uh, I would say is the flexibility uh, I want to like to talk about uh, so that we um, can get the accurate DCAC ratio uh, on a small sub area, the addition uh, to short term uh, changes in the module layout and uh, as well, we have uh, some points for short deliver delivery, easy um, delivery to remote locations and so on. And there it goes over to the next point. This is the simplicity of the string inverters. Um, this could also have some, some benefits in some cases. Um, for example, that we don't need any uh, concrete foundations, easy commissioning and so on. Um, third point is, on them. Um, I would like to talk about uh, the impact, what we can have or what uh, happens if we have more MPP tracker on the field and um, if we have accurate string monitoring and IV curve measurement. Um, and the last but not least point is uh, the repowering. Uh, we see now and it's increasing exponentially uh, at the moment. It's, it's um, really important that we see what's happened after maybe 10 years with these power plants. Um, how easy is it to repower this, these power plants? Um, yeah, so let's start with the first point, um, the flexibility. And here we see uh, a lot of times that we, uh, yeah, we, we uh, calculate the perfect DCAC ratio for a project, or you know, you know, it depends, it's really uh, different which DCAC ratio is the perfect for the project and the country where we are. It, it depends on, on so many factors like uh, the feed-in tariff or uh, what we get for one kilowatt hour um, and, uh, for an, and for the design of the PV power plant. So at the end, if we have a, a lot of DC connected to one inverter, for sure we have um, some, we will cut some uh, peaks and uh, we'll lose a bit yield, but um, it depends how how much it costs us if um, uh, if the feed-in tariff or the, the uh, what we get for one kilowatt hour, it depends if we have a PPA or feed-in tariff. And this um, at the end leads to a perfect DCAC ratio. And here we see sometimes if we have central inverters and we have small sub areas on a PV field um, that we want to connect a, um, a calculated number of modules to one field. For example, here we would like to connect um, uh, this part. And then uh, if we if see, for example, here we have two central inverters then we could connect or the best DCAC would be if we would fill up the whole field, but there is no um, inverter for the size. And then at the end, uh, it could end that we connect uh, not enough DC power to one inverter. And after that, uh, if, hap if something like uh, happens like this, then for sure the, all the calculations and if the inverter price is plus or minus 3%, it, it doesn't matter if, if at the end um, we have to connect 10 or 20% to, uh, and, um, or to less DC power. So at the end we uh, oversize the inverter um, and this wouldn't be a good, uh, yeah, so this is not our goal to have uh, too much inverter power on the field. We want to have it on the perfect ratio between DC and AC. And with string inverters, for sure, we can uh, fill up the field perfectly because uh, the one single unit of a string inverter is very small and then we can fill up the field perfectly. And um, yeah, to, due to this small power, this is uh, possible with a string inverter and this could be or this is in, in many cases in, in, for example, in Germany, where we have uh, a lot of times very small subfields, um, is this this one of the main reasons uh, why we um, decide to go with string inverters? And um, yeah, then um, <clears throat> another uh, good point is, or another point for flexibility is the uh, adaption to short-term changes during the planning phase. And um, here we see often uh, that yeah, it depends on the, on the building permit or some other cases if we have some changes regarding, um, yeah. so there are a lot of points why 
the uh, module layout can change very in very short term before the construction starting and if we lose some modules and we can't install so many modules like we want then it could happen that we at the end connect not enough modules to one inverter and if it happens with a string inverter project um, it's not a big issue regarding the dcac ratio then we just install less inverters and at the end we are there where we want and we can take this um, inverters, for example, for the next project and easily shift it to the next uh, project. And this is, uh, yeah, not a big issue here. So the flexibility is one um, really good point here. Um, another point is the, uh, the, are the logistics um, with uh, string inverters, which is an advantage for us, um, a lot of, lot of projects. Um, um, yeah, with central inverters, for sure, we have long lead times and we yeah, have to order it uh, well in advance and we need to know how the project really looks like in maybe some months. And uh, sometimes it's possible, then it's also good uh, to, to use with, with central inverters, but here it's, it's a lot of times it's, this could be an advantage. Um, then another point. Of, um, yeah, remote locations. Um, oh, I got a notice that the internet connection is not so well, but uh, can you hear me well uh, and see everything fine? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay, yes. good. Perfect. Good. Then um, here you see, for example, I think this is a project from us, I think in France and Villeneuve. And here you see it's directly in the mountains and it's not so easy um, uh, to, to bring all this stuff for the PV power plant to the side. And uh, we are really lucky um, if we can get the transformer station to this uh, side. But if we don't have to carry any uh, 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 transformer sta uh, inverter stations to this place. This is a good point, and then it's uh, really good if you just uh, at the end you just need to pick up uh, to to bring an, a central a string inverter to the side, and this could for remote locations uh, is a big advantage. Um, yeah, and for the installation, for sure, um, this is possible with two persons, um, and uh, yeah, so the one string inverter just um, yeah just a small unit what we can carry in an easy way and here we are and the next point uh, which is important for us is in general the simplicity of the string inverter um, nowadays um, there's one more advantage because of the size of one string inverter um, so size means here the nominal power of one string inverter. And in the past, so in general, we try to have one um, um, a power area where we bring all strings together, which has a size of 150 to 200 kilowatts. That makes sense from the cable losses and so on. And um, in the past, we mount uh, more string inverters up 10 or seven or five string inverters bring this together to one uh, AC combiner and this combined current we, we um, bring to the transformer station. And nowadays the string inverter has a size which is optimal. So um, the size of the string inverter is around about um, 150 or 200 kilowatts. And this means um, at the end that we don't need any AC combiner or and uh, um, no DC combiner. So there's one component less. And so the whole system gets more easy so there are less components which could uh, lead to problems or um, have any other issues and for sure um, we save uh, the cost for these components and um, this is a good point so some the last years uh, they achieved a really good um, the optimum size for a string inverter and i wouldn't recommend to have bigger string inverters than we come to yeah, to the problems what we have with central inverters would appear then for string inverters. So I think now we achieved the optimum size for an for one string inverter. And it's still possible to mount this device directly on the module table as you see here. So this is all this is really simple. And um, the commissioning is also really simple and can uh, made by their own staff. And um, 
this is also a big advantage compared to in a central inverter, as you can see here. Um, you need a concrete uh, foundation, uh, which needs to prepare. Uh, for sure, this is it's possible, but um, it's one task more to do. And um, DC combiners are required. And um, uh, yeah, in general, uh, central inverters are complex systems. So there's one complex unit in, on the PV field. So for sure, it's it's manageable, and we do this also. Uh, but um, in general, we try to to have a simple and easy system on the field, which couldn't have so many problems and where we can solve the problems very easy. And uh, here with central inverters, this is one of the most uh, complex systems, more on the uh, PV fields. And um, yeah, this is not our goal. So it's always good to have it really simple on, on field. And um, yeah, and for the commissioning, it's also required that we have the, the um, stuff from the company who provides the inverter for the commissioning. And also we need an uh, extensive acceptance test uh, for every device. And this is not uh, required for a string inverter. <clears throat> yeah, then I would come to the next point. Um, this is operation and maintenance. Um, here, uh, for sure, the, if you have any malfunction, if a failure in the system, um, <clears throat> one string inverter is just a small part uh, of the power plant, and so, is, and at the end, only a small part of the power plant is affected by an, by a failure. Um, so there is not so much hurry on this, like uh, if we have a problem with central inverter there we have to there we have to react very quick and um, here it's it's not so critical um, and if we have a problem in the inverter for sure we can repair sometimes but um, um, at a central inverter we yeah, we try to repair and for a string inverter if it gets too complicated we just replace this black box um, and this is easy. We just need to disconnect, uh, switch off, disconnect, and place a new one, and and can connect one time, and then uh, the system is running. Um, this is one big advantage here for the O and M. And um, <clears throat> yeah, if we have to, yeah, um, to fix the problem, there's no special inverter expert necessary. So this this replacement is, is can made by our own stuff. Um, one more uh, point, uh, this is more for the yield or for the operation, um, are the MPP tracker. So if we use uh, string inverters, uh, we have for sure more MPP tracker on the field. It's not just one MPP tracker for the whole area. Um, and yeah, it, and this, this advantage depends a bit also on the layout of what we have. If we have a high area utilization so that this, the, the space between the module rows is very small, then it could be a benefit if we have only, uh, if we have more MPP trackers. So if here in this graph, what you see here is, um, um, it's just a power plant. I can show you this in detail here. This is, um, a huge power plant and the here in the middle what you see is the station one two three four this is a transformer station this is um powered by string inverters and here the whole area around is uh, powered by um central inverters and here uh, i just compared some um feed in curves from from uh, one single day and here <coughs> you can see uh the blue lines which is uh, from uh, uh, one inverter, which is on the bottom line. So we have installed here um, module tables, which four module rows per table in landscape, and every row is connected to one string. And if we have string inverters, we connect always one string to one inverter or MPP tracker in the inverter. And so we have inverters or MPP trackers, which are only connected to the top row, then some to the top center, to the bottom center, or to, or to the bottom row. And here you can see on the 21st of September, um, 
the inverter, which is connected to the um, strings, which are on the bottom, um, if there is a shading effect, what you can see here, but all the other three, three um, uh, inverters are working without any effect and can work with 100% and has no electrical effect here. And with a central inverter, we have the problem that the lower row is uh, shaded and we also have an electrical effect for this uh, for the other three rows because there is no uh, is only one um, uh, voltage where the MPP tracker can go and uh, yeah then we have an effect for all the uh, area and and here is the string inverters just we yeah pick this out this uh, these shaded rows and the electrical effect is not for the other, it's not, not a problem for all the other strings. <clears throat> um, yeah, but this uh, makes uh, is, is a big advantage if we have really high utilization and uh, high internal shadings. Um, yeah, one more point is this is appears now in the last month, I would say, or last year uh, more and more is, is the IOV curve measurement. Um, I think this is a really a big uh, step for, from uh, string inverters and a big advantage for the future. Um, because I see here a high potential for the, these, uh, for the analysis of errors. So we have really specific error detection here um, because we can, um, yeah, so the inverters are able, or the most of the inverters are able to, to measure IV curves um, in a very short time. So we can, for example, um, send a signal that in the next five minutes, the whole power plant will measure all strings or all strings which are connected to one MPP tracker. And then we get a lot of um, uh, IV curves and we can read out these IV curves with, with artificial intelligence to, to uh, know which failure is behind this, uh, this string or if there is no failure on this string. And then we can see directly, okay, do we have a problem with PID or is there cell shorts or something? Uh, some, there are a lot of possibilities and we directly can um, yeah, um, localize these strings and know which string is um, uh, affected by this, and this can reduce uh, the the flights with drones and so on. And we and at the end, we don't need to uh, to figure out which string has the problem. If we have a picture of a drone, we need an, another layout and bring this together. And here, directly, the string says to us, "Okay, I uh, this is my IV curve, and I have this problem, or there is no problem." This is. Yeah, really good, and I think uh, this is the future for for PV power plants to have this. Um, yeah, one more point, or one uh, yeah main point here, uh, uh, category is the repowering. Um, what I already mentioned is it's easier to repower a power plant uh, which has a string inverter. This is also an advantage. Um, yeah, it's just uh, if we have a problem with uh, it's a single unit, then we can just replace it easier. It's clear. We just need two people who um, can remove this this uh, inverter. And if we don't have these old inverters, we can take new one and and just find a suitable device. Uh, maybe before uh, in the past, maybe we installed five inverters and connect to one AC combiner. But um, uh, nowadays, then we would just place one string inverter at this place and uh, yeah, can easily figure out which string inverter could fit to this area. And this, this is quite useful. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, um, yeah, or it's more or less, yeah, an equal point. So, um, the small string inverters can be used to match the old nominal power of uh, the area. So that means at the end, the, the, what we, where we connect all strings or string inverters for, for one AC combiner, this is what I mean with this, is, uh, we put this together and then change or, or replace just these old inverters and AC combiner with one other device and the 
great benefit out of this is we can leave the DC cables, so the string cables, we can leave it like it is, and we can use the AC cables, which are already installed, also like it is, and don't have too many changes and repower very easy and, and cheap if, if we have any problems with inverters. Um, and uh, yeah, as you can imagine, if you want to replace a central inverter, this is uh, yeah more difficult. And uh, so at the end, you need to repair uh, the uh, central inverter. Uh, but if this is not possible, then um, yeah, we would have a really big issue because the sizes of the central inverters of the past are far away from the sizes or, or the nominal power what we can get on the current market. And I think in this case, so we don't have this problem uh, until now, um, but in this case, I would also think that one possibility could be that we um, leave the DC combiners in the field like it is and um, install a uh, string inverter bank and bring these DC main cables to this um, uh, central a string inverter so that we would connect the power from one DC combiner to one string inverter and then uh, replace the central inverter with this uh, strategic. Um, this could be in point, uh, but yeah, at the moment it doesn't happen. So this I also have to say in, in general, so the central inverters, we, we installed the, the reliability of this is very good. So, and in general, I have to say um, these are all advantages of uh, string inverters and but we need and we also um, have a look to all these points for every project in every country and it always depends um, how big is the benefit really for every single advantage here and then we need to decide if we go with string inverter or central inverter but it, uh, also um, I don't want to give the impression that all these advantages al always ends up to that we go with string inverter. This is uh, not the truth, but um, the here I think everybody should know about these advantages and should consider this for his own projects. And um, we at Anna Park, we really often uh, build our power plants with string inverters and see really big advantages here. Okay, I think, um, here I am at the end for my presentation, and um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm interested to to hear what Gary you say about this inverters, and um, yeah, then we okay. I think we answer some questions uh, later. Okay, thanks, Armin. Uh, great presentation. Uh, so let's uh, let's continue. So now that we um, um, <clears throat> saw the the view of. Um, of an EPC developer. So we're looking at um, one of the leading inverter manufacturers, um, Jin Long Solis, and uh, Gary Lam will um, share um, his view on how the evolution of utility scale solar should look like. Um, Armin, I think you have to stop sharing and then Gary can take over. So okay. no three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Does it look nice? <laughs> Thank you so much, I Armin. Mean, like that was a really good presentation. You know, it definitely already covered a lot of points that I want to make. And even better is this point of aspect came from a um, IPP or developer EPC's point. Um, usually I, I only, you know, selling, pushing this thing, but it's good that, you know, um, our customer were able to get a feedback. Um, so today I'm going to go over what's new in the inverter, well, string inverter. I've been uh, in the PV industry for 11 years now. I've been uh, working on this study for electrical and actually uh, solar particularly and and then first I started as RMD engineer for inverter company. And from there, I always work all my way uh, at the inverter industry. And also uh, my expertise is um, uh, working with small inverter in large utility space. My first company uh, is called uh, Petro, Petro Solar in New Jersey, United States. 
they make micro inverter for utility project. So uh, I, I could say I'm pretty familiar with and uh, specialized in how this small inverter could make effective into the utility market. And today, uh, the product I would like to focus on is the 255 kilowatt. If some of you may think uh, string inverter are only uh, function in particular sector, uh, sometimes you might think, okay, in this sector, I could use this size inverter, but on a larger side, most likely happen in large scale utility, um, you, you might think that CapEx still has the advantage. But today uh, with the 255, I hope I could uh, you know, share my point of view and also help you uh, think that a utility project could also be a, a different game player for, with the string inverter. First of all, just a very brief introduction about the company. Uh, we have actually been in business for the last 15 years. We are one of the oldest string inverter manufacturer uh, worldwide now who is dedicated in making string inverter only. We start making it since 2005. And uh, we have been endorsed by all third party, all our products and company and factory are all audited by third party, including DMV GL, Bromberg, uh, EUPD Research, and also our company are listed on Shenzhen Stock Exchange um, uh, as a publicly traded company. Our net profit was also going, growing very strong. We rose 280% from two, 2019 uh, quarter one to 2020 quarter one. So this, all this number shows very strong growth for the company. And that's it for the company intro. Uh, feel free to reach out for more if you're interested. But what I wanna say is um, why string inverter makes sense now you know, remember 10 years ago, none of this makes sense. People will, none of us think about string inverter uh, to, to replace central inverter, mainly it's because the cost. And you can see um, the cost for the last um, 10 years now, uh, where I started my solar career in 2010, string inverter and central inverter have a huge price gap. This is for utility project, what I mean. The price you see, you might see higher price up to a dollar, um, but this is strictly for large scale utility price. So the price was almost 20, 25 to 30% different. But as you see, as time grow, the technology becoming more mature, the manufacturing capacity becoming more saturated. And therefore we are able to bring the string price down a lot. Um, by this year, 2020, you see that the gap is almost non-existing. And to continue, we do believe that due to the manufacturing process of the string inverter being fully autonomous, um, the labor cost will continue to decrease. And therefore, our inverter cost will continue to decrease. Now, what is main differentiator between our uh, 255 with the rest of the inverter in the market, um, the 125, 150, maybe 180 that you see. First, obviously you see the size is a lot larger. It also support a very, very high DC AC ratio. Um, what is that ratio? It's gonna be 200%. So you can fit in 200% of the DC uh, to exchange for half of the AC output. What, the, what is that useful is, I will go into that later, is mainly for the future storage projects. When you combine PV plus storage, you will want to charge your battery effectively. And therefore the high DC AC ratio is required. Unit provide higher U with the same capex. The unit have a higher U because it is um, distributed design. It has multiple MPPT. This unit equipped with 14 MPPT with 28 strings, highest in the market. Um, and the more MPPT available, allowing you to connect bifacial module or even regular monofacial module more effectively. They're able to track every small panel energy difference. And so com when combined with bifacial, you will see up to 10% of yield increase. And uh, Ahmed have mentioned it, and I really like it, is the OMM. The OMM make it so easy. Um, as Ahmed said, this thing you could either 
just repair it on site if this is minor or if not you're in an urgent and need it fixed swap it out just get uh, usually you get a inventory service inventory and all you need is just disconnect this unit throw it out and put it in our units all designed to be plug and play all the connector are mc4 and therefore uh, making install and uninstall very easy next i'm gonna walk you into a traditional utility site a, a flatland of three megawatt as an example how you should design the system with our uh, Genlon Solis 255 kilowatt. On the screen, you will see this is a traditional central block with module on the left side coming in with the DC combiner box and fit into inverter for another recombining stage and then to the transformer for, for interconnections. So I want you to focus uh, on the DC combiner box at this point. Remember, this is 14 DC combiner box of 24 strings input. So first thing we do is you know, we no longer need the central inverter, so we take it out. And see this magic step? The inverter will replace the DC combiner box. I would say it's not only replace on an electrical sense, but it actually replaces the DC combiner box at its location. It makes your engineering design so easy. Next time, what you need to do is on the DC combiner box, you just relabel it as string inverter because it has very similar string count. Uh, we have 28 strings compared to traditional DC combiner box, which is 24, we have to increase the, the string of it so you have less point of install. Remember, this is 14 DC combiner box and we are only replace it with only 12 inverter and that's sufficient for the site. And that enhance the saving, you will be installing less. And just go back to the questions, why a lot of people will think string inverter might not be suitable for traditional utility site is because the amount of installation is not equivalent to a central inverter. And mainly because of the string size. Most inverters right now available on the market have 20 or less strings. And therefore, um, it's really hard to design to around the DC-AC ratio. Usually you, you fully load the inverter and you could only get the DC-AC ratio what you desire. But with ours, with the, all these extra strings, you will really be a, flexible to install this unit at any at, at either aspect from electrical design point, from fuel installation point, or from maintenance point. It's just a swap. After that, um, obviously, we will need to change the DC wire to AC wire. And then we'll have one stage combining at the transformer level. We'll add an AC switch gear to combine the 12, uh, 255. Remember, this is a three megawatt uh, block. And even better, we eliminate also the data line, which is on yellow. We eliminate it, and you see there's an AC power line going in. Uh, this is not a mistake because we have implemented a technology called PLC. It's called power line communications, which the communication signal will carry through the AC power line that you already installed. So there's no additional work required for installing the, uh, uh, the uh, communications. And really one thing I really like about uh, Amos comment is about the inverter skit. You used to need to pad a big concrete pad on the ground to install the inverter, or uh, you have someone outside, a third party to pre-build the skit, the inverter and the transformer skit outside. Either way, it's an additional cost, but with string inverter, you no longer need it. So very clearly, uh, on the, from this side, you already see there's a lot of component less to install than central inverter. So from labor or BOS point of view, uh, the 255 is a true string inverter that could compete up against central. Because of all these reduced component and installations. Now, last part is, does the cost make sense? As I said, you know, feel free to uh, contact us for that. But 
remember my chart so earlier about the price the price right now get very very close to central you almost will see no difference on the uh, on, on the price so to um, just reinforce what uh, is important is the replacement of DC combiner box so what really we're doing is reduce the BOS cost by eliminating the DC combiner box right and actually reduce the connectivity hardware cost and this is just some comparison traditional DC combiner box has 24 string input it requires fuses uh, OT terminal that require constant torque check and AFCI protections cost extra string monitoring are not usually uh, included. We don't want that. With our inverter, you got anywhere from 28 to 42 strings input. It is fuse-free design. It means that you do not require DC fuses. AFCI comes standard with all uh, 255. String monitoring comes standard with all the unit and therefore lead to IV curve analysis also available to you. DC coupled uh, energy storage ready. This is another big point I would like to go into after. Uh, all the DC connector are made with MC4, which require no torque track, reduce your O&M effort. IP66 rating, make sure this inverter will install in any location uh, without any modification or added cost. Anti-PID built-in for film film module or some legacy module that requires. One thing I also want to uh, go into is the benefit of the ultra-low startup and operating voltage. We have few models available right here. Um, the one I'm talking with 255 kilowatt, it comes with 28 strings and 14 MPPTs. It has a super low startup voltage at 620 volt and the standard operation voltage at 600 volt. Uh, this is the all DC. Output voltage of 600 or 800 volt AC. Um, this is why the two different models and it's the same inverter. 255 will output 800 volt. Uh, for a whole walk of 70 kilowatt more power and 185 will support 600 volt AC output. And what would that bring you? Actually, that go back again, and uh, I really love Ahmed's presentation because cover a lot of our, our design feature. One of the thing is right now, you don't have a retrofit um, inverter for really repowering old central site but this inverter will enable you that function. It's what the ultra low voltage support legacy, thousand volt DC system modules. And as I mentioned before, this unit will completely replace DC combiner box at its location and electrically. So what you really need to do is just disconnect your DC combiner box, take it out, um, and then just rewire, or not, not rewire, but uh, terminate the DC wire with MC4 connector, install this unit at the same location and stop plugging them in. And you are finished with the repower project. You could even leave your central inverter sitting on the pack without touching it to reduce cost. Go even further is our 100 kilowatt unit. This unit has smaller strength due to a smaller size. The startup voltage is less than 200 volts with 480 volt AC output. It support even older module at 400 and 600 volt level. That makes that means repowering with even older module become become a possibility and uh, easy to achieve plug and play uh, replacement solution. The flexible DC AC ratio. Uh, it actually gives you a lot more because it actually gives you a more yen energy yield. As you can see, uh, just if we are doing a traditional string and increasing the DCAC ratio will increase the time that the inverter will start generating. Now, all these uh, colored sections are the increased yield that you have. The more you get, the higher the AC ratio, um, the higher the yield you will receive. Now, the communication part. The power line communication is really a lifesaver. 
it creates a cable-free communication. It is super reliable because you're no longer depending on that tiny uh, RS-485 wire. Instead, all the communication is going through the most robust AC power line. It is the life of the PV site, right? So it is transmitting through the AC line is the most secure things that we will want to do. It, is, it operates at much higher speed. It could achieve 10 times the speed of RS-485. And most importantly, it creates a parallel communications for string inverter. It means the latency uh, that we receive from the COM box to all inverter will be minimal. All the inverter will receive the signal at the same time. Instead of the traditional daisy chain method, first inverter and the last inverter will have a significant time delay in receiving commands. And that actually complicates things for our future smart grid uh, applications. Storage capability. It is one big point of our inverter uh, is to support both AC and DC couple system by, by, nat by natural. Obviously, AC energy system, I don't have to uh, talk a lot into it. It support all kinds of system, not, not only ours, but any of the inverter manufacturer could be paired well with AC. But on DC, right now and on the market, I don't know how big of a demand you might have. Uh, in the US, we have a lot of demands for storage. And most of our competitor or other companies' products design a PV inverter and a PV and storage inverter. That forces you to design your system at the very beginning. Do I want PV or only, or do I want storage? I cannot add it later on because you will have to put it up front. And um, it's really two systems. The whole engineering design and cost aspect are completely different. But with our system, what approach we take is we design that PV inverter right now that will be future compatible with any third party um, DC energy storage system. What means is you will get the price of a PV inverter now, today, and install it, design it as a PV inverter in future three to five years, maybe, maybe even closer. You think the storage now makes sense or some incentive come up for storage. Now you want to add storage to it, no problem. You just uh, this, you just draw your new design, nothing has to change, and just wire um, the DC wire to our inverter and connect it in the future. And I, we, I truly believe this really set a game changer um, for the market because you don't really have to think about storage now and you, don't, you won't be missing it in the future. On the maintenance side, the major maintenance about it um, on the traditional central is the fan and filter. A lot of damage are also caused by that, you know, the air polluted air uh, particle that get in that got accumulated inside the inverter. So with our design, we uh, do a high efficient cooling design is with, with done redundant fan control. What does that mean? Is primary cooling method is a convection cooling. It conducts uh, internal heat to the outside via heat sink. So it's not via heat exchange. So then, then from the heat sink, it will do the external air exchange with the ambient air. And we have added five of the long life uh, active fan to accelerate the uh, heat exchange process. So no, it, there will never be any air exchange inside and out of the inverter chassis. It means during the whole operation life of the inverter, you will not have to open it at any given time. And therefore, we do not any, need any filter or anything to protect the inverter because everything is external. All the heat exchange is done externally. Therefore, um, it's little earlier, no maintenance inverter. It's also listed in our user manual saying this inverter do not require constant maintenance, right? So with the design lifespan of 25 years, we hope to give you a very uh, easy to work with inverter. This is uh, some pictures. I think Ahmed actually got 
a better picture uh, than, than I am with the inverter. He actually, he shows a picture really nicely at the back of the rack. Um, this is what we are trying to show here as well. Um, uh, yeah. And the last things, um, all the smart features, we support also the IV curve scanning. The IV curve scanning really provides you not only uh, the problem that will happen with the inverter, it will also tell you what is going on with your module. With all the string monitoring that we have built into our inverter at no additional cost to you, you will be, you will be enabled, entitled to this free IV curve scanning function that will provide you with uh, troubleshooting, uh, future revenue forecast, and more. So the 255, to summarize it, I really want to say this is a, it, it is creating a new era in the, in, in the PV industry. This string inverter go up against central inverter in all aspects, in cost, functionality, reliability, availability, and more. So reduction of capex is number one things I could think of this inverter. And then also it improve OPEX and brings in the smart o &M, um, that will greatly help in any projects that you are doing. I think that will be uh, my presentation. Thank you very much, everyone. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks, Gary. Uh, great comprehensive um, overview. Um, there are a couple of questions from the audience, but let, maybe let me start with one question from my side, Gary. Um, she, I just uh, recently uh, um, uh, looked into the uh, Q3 presentation from Solis, and I have to say I was pretty impressed about the expansion plans you're having. Maybe you can just uh, um, um, give us a short overview on um, what your expansion plans are and uh, what, where are you looking um, to, to deploy this? Absolutely, absolutely. Give me, let, me, let, me put up, let me try to pull a good picture of that expansion plan. Give me one second. Okay, uh, so let me share my screen again. Yes, so um, this is this is the new factory. We, we are currently, uh, the new factory is currently under construction. As you can see, this is mainly driven by the demands that we, see, we receive from the global market. As you can see from 2018, we ship three gigawatt. In 2019, we are shipping five gigawatt. And same as this year, because our existing manufacturer have saturated. And therefore, we are building a new facility. In the past, Solis has been focusing a lot on CNI and residential. Now, with the utility market, we are projecting the volume will go up you know, exponentially. So our new 15 gigawatt facility are currently under construction and target to be finished by the end of the year. And by 2021, we will have total of 20 gigawatt. It's five plus 15 gigs of capacity uh, available uh, for this uh, increase the demand that we see. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, um, we just have a few minutes. So I think a couple of questions uh, centered around um, about reliability and uh, quality. So I think that that goes probably to both of you. So one to, to Armin um, to, um, regarding actually how his, um, his experience is um, with, um, with uh, reliability of string versus uh, central inverters. And then um, also to, to Gary, uh, once again, maybe to elaborate a little bit more on, on what you said on, on, on your, product design. Um, and the, the question, one question was actually also further going into this. Um, are there, is, is anyone knowing about reliability studies? Because there's a lot of being done with modules. We can see the NVGL, PVL, whatever they are called, all these, um, these labs doing all these um, studies. And there are a lot of rankings out there. Is there anything like that also for inverters? especially um, comparing string versus, um, versus central inverters. Maybe um, Gary first and then Armin. 
Absolutely. I would like to share a screen as well. Um, yes, there's a lot of inverter manufacturers out there and we all have experience with the old and new system. So to make it easy, Genon actually, um, we stop, we, we kind of stop just selling ourselves. Instead, we work with all these third party. Um, in, so particularly in this case, we work with DMVGL to provide so-called inverter lifetime analysis. Uh, Genlong is actually the first inverter manufacturer that requests DMV um, to perform such analysis. And us and DMV, we actually develop, co-developed this um, analysis report. So it took some time. So we started the project 2016 and the project was generated 2019, being you know, the first inverter manufacturer that request them. And then obviously during that time, some other inver inverter manufacturer also joined the list. But uh, still, uh, this, part of, this report was fresh uh, from last year, 2019. It's not too, too while back. And they actually have an impressive um, summary for our inverter they actually admit that our inverter quality is actually on the top of the uh, string inverter light projections. It's one of the top manufacturers due to the fact that we actually provide them with extremely long track of history since 2005, 2009 probably. We send DMVGL all the reliability data from them, RMA, uh, damage, QA process, and also obviously they did their manufacturing audit. So hopefully by working with this kind of third party report, we will help our customer to really reduce their, their due li diligence effort. So they don't have to really uh, start looking everything. Instead, we could, they could look at this uh, reputable third party report and get comfortable with our product. Okay. Armin, maybe you yeah. want to comment on this? So yeah, our, re um, uh, yeah, experience with the reliability of inverters. Um, so it's not so easy to compare. So we installed some uh, central inverters, especially in the past. So long time ago, 10, around about 10 years, 10, 11, 12 years ago. And uh, we have to say this, this central inverters works very well and the reliability is very high. So I can't say any bad things about this, but it's only, um, uh, yeah, one brand, uh, I don't want to say here too much, but um, yeah, for string inverters, it, it differs. Uh, um, some brands are not so good, some are very well and have a really high reliability, but I can't say about really accurate numbers about this. I'm not working in the O&M part, but I, what, this is what I heard about this. Okay, okay. Um... Maybe I think there was also one question also regarding reliability on colder climates, um, Gary. Um, so how is that for your products? Because you referred more, more to warmer climates and cooling. Yes, yes. Um, so for that, um, actually our inverter are designed to work down to minus 20 degrees Celsius and uh, minus 40 degrees Celsius in the storage temperature. What does that mean is our inverter actually controlled by sensor and chipset um, for the temperature. So I see that question about can Canada and Northern US install as actually it's very safe. The inverter, uh, when it detects ambient temperature below minus 20 degree, it will just refuse to turn on to protect the inside component. And once it reaches minus 20 degrees Celsius, it will, um, it will, the inverter will be back into normal mode. Okay, okay. Um, so a question maybe to Armin. So um, regarding for which sizes you prefer um, um, string inverters um, and for which uh, central inverters or what's, what's the, if, if, if is, is size a design criteria for you also? Um. Yes, it is. So, but it's, it's hard to say. It differs a lot, and there are a lot of different points. But I think, in general, um, we think about central inverters for a project which are more than twenty megawatts, because we know in the if we have a project with less uh, 
than 20 megawatts, we always have some smaller subfields. And then we got the problem, what I told about these DCAC ratio topics. And, and uh, but I can't say it in general, but in the most of the cases is like this, so that we think about central inverters for more projects more than 20 megawatts, I would say. Yeah, and if I understood you correctly, it's also that even if you take a um, larger scale um, or if you take central inverters to optimize the fields, you still often use then also sometimes some string inverters to kind of really have an optimal coverage of the plant. Yes, yes, if this is the case, if we have a really homogeneous big field where we can place central inverters in a good way, this could happen. Um, then we also would place some, uh, so in the, in the edge or on the, on the, from the PV power plant, or if there are some smaller subfields, then we put string inverters in this field. And in the huge fields in the middle, we put uh, central inverters. Um, yeah, but it also depends on, on the site and some, a lot of other things what we need to calculate all together. So at the end, for us at for us in, at Anna Park, it's the BOS costs are interest uh, are interesting. So not only the inverter costs, the BOS costs, the yield for the uh, production for the next twenty years, or what the contract says for the uh, for the incomings, and also for the maintenance as well. So all these points together. Um, are important and uh, yeah, leads to the decision what we made then. Okay, so so maybe let's look at larger modules. So we came recently out also with a, with a report on this and had a conference um, on on large scale modules. It's getting bigger and bigger, and uh, so it's it's for um, so we have two hundred ten millimeter um, wafers and currents are high. So Gary, um, so how, how can your inverters deal with uh, these new new products? Yes, yes, that, that's a very, very good point. So currently, um, we our, our model that developed will suit for this year uh, module, mostly uh, 2021. Um, we have a short circuit current of like 40 amps per uh, MPPT. Remember, our unit uh, take the approach of um, two strings per MPPT design, and each string input are actually equivalent to the MPPT input. So its maximum uh, input current is 26 amp, and maximum short circuit current of 40 amps that will support up to 500 watt module. And then we will have our next um, actual version two of the 255, which support a 15 amps and therefore 30 amps per MPPT. Um, modules. And after two years, uh, that was just to support us, us to 600 and 700 modules, 600 watt plus module. And then after that, due to the size of the module being so big, we do not need two strings now. So each inverter, remember our inverter have 28 strings. Now only 14 strings will, will be powering up the inverter with enough of DCAC ratio. So by that time we get to 700, 800 inverter, we can come back to our 255. Now we use each string at 26 amp, which is you not know, very, very large power. And therefore um, continue using the product. This is when we have to, this is when we designed it. Um, this is how our approach to extend the life of the inverter, because we really think the 255 actually uh, is a really good uh, sweet spot for, for the install because it completely replaced the DC combiner box and things like this. Okay, I think that's great final words. So we're already over time. So we have a couple of several more questions. What we will try to do is we will cluster these questions So once again, actually, thank you to Gary from Solis and Armin from Inner Park on this interesting topic on advantages of string inverters. Um, so just a few words on us. We're, we've just published, now coming back to the module, just, um, um, Min, can you just move forward? Um, we just um, published recently a report on Backsheets and encapsulation, also important for reliability of the module and the system. You can download that for free. 
Um, we will have several more webinars coming up and conferences this year. Um, thanks for staying with us and looking forward to see you soon again. As already mentioned in the Q, um, in the panel um, control panel, um, all the presentations or the videos um, of the presentations will be accessible either through our website or on YouTube. Thanks again. Have a nice day. Have a nice evening. And bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you for joining. Bye bye.